right, this is going to be video one of three of the um, home-built small electric powder coating oven. The inside dimensions of this oven are 32 and a half by 32 and a half by 60. So that's 32 and a half deep, 32 and a half wide, and 60 inches tall. That's the inside measurements. The outside measurements are a bit larger than that just to accommodate for the insulation and the wall thickness, everything like that. So um, this is video one of three. We're going to go over um, three different things. The first video is going to cover just general construction of this and overall design and layout of this um, oven. And then video two is going to dive into the electrical and actually how things are working uh, in the oven. And then the third video are things that I would change with every project that I've ever done. Um, by the time you're done with it, there are some things looking back on it that you'd like to change or do differently. And this is no exception. Hey, right there's a the small oven, big ovens over here. That'll be another video. Um, and the booth is further over in this corner. That'll be another um, few videos as well. We're going to make a few videos for each one of these and show them all in depth, um, give you guys a good idea about what it takes to build one of these. So first things first, um, <clears throat> let's talk about the front. This is a window um, out of an oven door from a GE um, double oven. That was originally the plan was to build one of those uh, or just to buy one of those and make it into a small powder coating oven. And by the time we um, took everything apart, we thought, hey, let's just build one that's a little bit bigger. Um, and we're really glad that we did. This one, um, even though it's a lot smaller than the big oven, it's still really, really helpful. Um, you know, I built these uh, with my dad and for my dad. I designed them all and cut them all out and bent up all the pieces. Um, and then we assembled them and built them together. Um, this one he actually built uh, more or less on his own. Um, I just designed it and cut all the pieces and then he assembled it on his own. The other two we did together. Um, but this is the first one that we did out of the three and we learned a lot with this. Uh, so there, that third video about things that I would change, there's going to be plenty of things in there. First thing though is this, that's something I'm really happy with, um, this front glass. So that's out of that original oven that we bought off of Marketplace. It was, I don't know what it was, 100 bucks for um, an oven with um, two doors on it, which we ended up using the glass, uh, the second set of glass for the big oven. Um, we use this one for the small oven, and this is something I would definitely keep. Um, I really like it. The hinges on it, we didn't really think ahead of, on that, so we ended up having to bend some hinges here um, to work for this setup because it's not totally recessed and it's not totally on the outside, so it made the hinges a little difficult to figure out, um, but we got that. I plasma cut all these panels, so I was able to measure it all out and how many, you know, where the rivet spacing needed to be and put that in there and then radius those inside corners to give it a more fit uh, or better fit and finish uh, there. These are just some Staco uh, toggle clamps that we use to keep that shut and a little um, you know just your typical handle you get it like a hardware store right here uh, for the window. We put this is um, <clears throat> called tadpole gasket you can get it on Amazon or various other places uh, we've got that and riveted it in place. It's a flat gasket right here and it's got a little um, like rope that runs through the inside to give it a little bit more of a seal there. Uh, and that seals right up against the inside of this um, panel here so it gives it a, a decent seal. We still do get some heat around the outside edge and this door um, will get you know pretty warm um, from time to time but it's not bad, it's still manageable. Uh, we did shove insulation in here and um, in between these to try to help out and it did help out a little bit but there's still some room for improvement there which we'll talk about in the third video. Hey, so here is the small opening in here. This is really nice for me able to see in um, and it just, I mean, we can see through the glass but being able to uh, put an infrared temp gun on your parts to see when they're to temp. Um, it's been really helpful. I would definitely do this again um, with any oven that you build or purchase. I would make sure it has a window in it. It's been very, very helpful. <coughs> um, our electric box over here. Uh, I bought the box itself from an electrical supply place near our house. And then I um, did all the cutouts and wired everything up. We were going to cover that, though, in another video. Um, but one thing I want to cover right now is just this spacing. We spaced it out um, so there's an air gap. If you can see through there, there's an air gap between the oven itself and the electrical um, enclosure. And I think that's really important. Um, we're finding out on the bigger oven we need to do the same thing because the um, electric panel is getting pretty warm and it's not due to the electronic 
electronics inside. It's due to the um, radiant heat from the oven that's coming through the wall. There's not a lot of it. Um, it's not a big deal, but I'd like to um, just at least create that air gap there so that we're not you know, worried about burning up any components. <clears throat> up top, you'll see these two boxes here. Those are what house our lights. There's two lights inside here. Um, and you know everything's kind of crude on this oven and we're going to talk about that in the third video about things we would change. Um, but those have our lights in them and uh, we'll show you what that looks like on the inside. All right, here's the two lights up top. I made these little circular cutouts to kind of dress it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more professional. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Um, these two lights do a really good job for this size oven. There's no dark spots or anything like that. They're just two high temp appliance bulbs. Over off to the sides. Yeah, you'll see these down here on both sides. It makes it kind of look like a rocket ship from a distance. Um, you'll see those on the outsides there. Those are because on the inside, we have our elements that are recessed so that we have a little bit more room. You can see down in there, those elements are actually not sticking out there um, inside of those those holes there uh, which have been a, a big help um, it allows you to fit a lot more in here now it was it did make the build on this a lot more challenging um, there's a lot to take into account with the header and everything like that above that uh, and just trying to build that out it, it, it did take a lot more thought um, there to do that uh, one more thing of, that I will mention about the elements uh, you do you don't really want those right next to your parts that you're cooking because uh, say we have a tall part here, it's going to get baked um, too much down low, it's going to overcook it and on top it won't you know, be up to temp yet. So what I did uh, later on, this was not an initial thought, was I built um, a couple of these baffles and those can uh, get screwed in there in a couple spots to the wall but basically what that does is it still allows the heat out but it keeps all that infrared um, light or and it, you know i might be wrong in saying that but it keeps the um all of that direct heat that's what i should say anyway it keeps the direct heat off of the parts that are cooking it takes a lot longer to heat up having these baffles in that's why we leave them out for the most part unless you have a really tall part. Now, if we have a really tall part at this point, we can throw them in the big oven, but we went about a year um, in this oven before uh, we had the big oven even as an option. So um, we I made those up so that you can screw them down in a couple spots. It still lets some heat through, but it w it'll keep the direct heat off of your part, uh, which allows you to have a lot more uniform um, or uniformity on the heat from top to bottom if you're cooking a tall part or if you have several parts hanging, um, you know, it, one right after the other. Those have been a big help once in a while. He doesn't use them all the time, um, but when he does need them, they're a big help uh, just to keep, you know, the, the bottom from getting over um, overly cooked and the top from being undercooked uh, and it just kind of balances everything out. If you have your elements in a convenient spot to do something like that, I would suggest making those just for the times that you do need them. Um, otherwise, just run it without it. Uh, you'll learn your oven, you know, just like everyone has to. So. Um, I just figured I'd throw that in there in case it gives any of you guys an idea. Uh, you can see the fan um, right up there. It's, it's sucking in the hot air and blowing it out the bottom. Um, and the circulation fan actually works really well in this. It keeps a really consistent and even temperature. Up here, these are um, you know just adjustments basically. They're, they're mounts for, uh, this is just electrical conduit. Um, that we use to hang parts from. This, we don't roll a card in and out of. It has an insulated floor. Uh, we're gonna put it on casters. It's really a pain in the neck. Um, and you can see towards the bottom, just from moving it around, it's kind of tore up that bottom piece. Um, <clears throat> from uh, moving it around on uneven concrete with cracks in the cement and everything like that, it'll catch on anything. Uh, we're gonna put it on casters. Now, I wouldn't recommend if you have a uh, non-insulated floor <laughs> to put it on casters because they would leave a huge air gap. But um, since we have an insulated floor and we're not wheeling a cart in and out, um, it would be really helpful for us to be able to put this on casters. We're very limited on space right now, so um, being able to roll this thing around would be a big advantage, so hopefully we're gonna do that here in the near future. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, back to these. I, I cut these out on my CNC plasma table and bent them up on my press brake. This isn't an original idea. I've seen this in other ovens. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing new there. 
Uh, you'll see right up here, <clears throat> this red stuff right here, that is high temp um, silicone or RTV, whatever it is, uh, sealant. Um, that's something that I saw on the forums about um, the same type that everyone else is using that doesn't let off a bunch of um, oils or odors, things like that, that might um, cause fish eye and, uh, in your powder or in your finish. Um, so we use that in several places. Um, you'll see the right back there um, <clears throat> is our thermocouple. And that's basically what takes the temperature of the oven and sends it to your PID and allows your PID to adjust um, you know the the temperature through the elements from there this oven works great um, for our first oven build uh, it's been a really really good um, oven my dad uses it still all the time if he can fit parts in here he puts them in here rather than putting them in the big oven it works really really well um, <clears throat> you'll see on the end here this ugly looking thing right here uh, basically we had just had these um, clamps that clamp the door closed. There's the other the, the other portion right here for the clamps on the side um, And there's the other one right there and <clears throat> when we originally put these on uh, all we had them going into was the um, The little uh, you know super thin channel that we made the studs that we made the rest of it out of and it just it was flexing too much and it that stuff super thin so <clears throat> we took just a piece of scrap which is why it looks so ugly and screwed it to actually i think we have two of them layered in here yeah we do um that was a temporary fix about a year ago <laughs> and uh just like everything else if the temporary fix works it kind of stays and it's not in a beauty contest so we uh went ahead and left it um, you'll notice right now the door swings pretty well. Okay, for a powder coating oven, as far as those go, it swings really well. Um, and that's kind of uh, for a couple reasons. Okay, and powder coating ovens usually sag. Uh, this one's been going for a year and it's really not bad. It does have a little bit of sag to it, um, but it's not bad at all compared to a lot of others. And uh, really the main reason here would be due to these plates. Um, I plasma cut uh, these plates out and then um, we painted them and slapped them on and it works really well. So the reason you see a lot of these door hinges um, sagging over uh, the course of you know a few months to a year or longer is because they're just putting their hinges right into this thin sheet metal and um, it flexes, right? It's going to flex over time. So what we did was we plasma cut these out of a little bit thicker um, material. They're not real thick. I think I have these out of, you know, 16 gauge, but comparatively to the 20 gauge or 22 gauge, whatever you have your oven made out of, um, you know, they've got some beef to them. But what we did was we put a pattern of rivets in here um, that allowed it to really make it rigid on that hinge area all the way down. We put three hinges on it. These are just standard door hinges um, that we got from, I believe, Home Depot or uh, I might have ordered them on Amazon. I don't remember. Um, but uh, we did make some improvements on that, some major improvements on that on the big oven. The big oven has very heavy doors in comparison and very big doors um, and it's trying to support a wider width. Uh, so you've got more overhang that your hinges have to support on one end. So we did make some changes and the big oven doors are very, very smooth and they will never have a problem with sagging. We'll show you that in that video if you're interested in that. Let's go around the back here and take a look at our um, ductwork back here. You can see that it's warped over time and I will address that in the next video, to, or I mean the third video, talking about things that I would change. Uh, this is just a Dayton fan. Um, these Dayton fans, it's a Dayton high temp fan um, that people use for powder coating. This one is the smaller one. Uh, it's a small oven and really I think it, I think it turns the air over like six times per minute. Uh, I think it turns all the air over like every 10 seconds inside that oven. So it's not, I mean, it, it works pretty well. Um, it keeps a very consistent temperature without being too um, turbulent inside, which is what we're looking for. We don't want the air um, blowing the powder off or blowing a bunch of dust around and things like that. But basically what we have here are studs going down the side and um, it's insulated and uh, it works really, really well. Inside there we've got a couple of studs that are facing each other. So you got one right here and one on the other side. Sorry, I'm filming with one hand. So it makes a box um, that this it's sucking in um, this, this hot air from the top and it's shooting it down 
around that box to that uh, that piece on the inside that I showed you where it kind of that it's almost like an air diffuser it sends the air in different directions so it's not just making you know a cyclical um, path there it, it spreads the air around and that's how it gives us no hot spots uh, no cool spots uh, gives us a very consistent temperature throughout the entire thing so that was uh, definitely worth doing I see some guys just take up space in their oven you know for the amount of extra material you use here it, it in the grand scheme of things is hardly anything Hey, okay. um, up top here, you'll see some of our sloppy electrical work. You'll see some of our sloppy corners. Again, I'm going to address that in the third video. Um, this is just, you know, extra um, of the uh, little mounts there for your conduit. If in case we needed, we wanted to put them lower in the oven, uh, which I believe he has done before. Um, so we have a couple extras in there um, in case you need them. Um, that's pretty much it for the overall view of this oven. Video two is going to be over the uh, electrical. Now I'm not an electrician, so keep that in mind when you go into watching that one. And then video three is going to be going over the things that we would change.